Greetings, everybody. This is Time Rider. And I got a like a bonus uh, build for you here on Sunday because I just put one out yesterday. Uh, but the irony is I got a lot of stuff backing up on my bench, so uh, I need to start turning some of this out. But anyway, so today, in honor of my beloved Minnesota Vikings, I am going to refinish this purple 40 Ford, and I believe this is a deluxe. And I'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, stick around. This particular car, I mean the actual car, has always been one of my favorites. I like that it has a metal base. I bought this at um, a swap meet for 50 cents, if I remember. Uh, and it isn't that I have anything against purple. It's just I don't think I've ever seen a purple that's uh, quite so ugly. The whole thing was held together by one rolled over post and uh, the back bumper kind of hooked into the rest of the chassis. It had an interior that was incredibly basic and uh, window glass that just was fell right out. So held in by the interior. And you know I like to smooth these off. This car came with 60 horsepower, and if you wanted to upgrade, it was 85. Which I'm sure is less than most motorcycles today. And I just want the thing to snap together easily. Most problems that I've had with uh, end results always happen when I'm putting it back together. So uh, for me on the front end, it always made sense to get it back together easily do the things I needed to do these wheels are junk uh, but I do want to use the the native uh, axle holders I'm going to do a wheel swap to M2's but I don't really care about these Hot Wheels wheels funny thing is is I'll save them anyway because I'm such a pack rat and then uh, my goo is cold like the Klingon proverb, revenge, a dish best served cold. Give it a shake for luck, Lee. Then, of course, once I get it out of my uh, warm goo, I go after it with a wire brush just to get the casting clean. This is basically the same car from about 1937 until uh, 41. I don't want the casting line, so I'm going to file those off, and trust me, it had plenty. Uh, it was a real low-grade casting because they were really big. You can kind of, after you do this a while, you can kind of tell. And there was a lot of this. Steel wool section, you can kind of see on both fenders, right in that crevice, uh, there's a little bit of casting line I'm having trouble getting out. And the uh, chassis, of course, I just want to... Uh, drill out these clamps effect this is a metal casting makes these a really good way to hold an axle in even if it was plastic i would still be doing this and there's i'm using an m2 wheel set you know one of the ways you could tell the deluxe from the standard in 1940 was uh, the grill the the standard the lower end version kind of had a swoopy down point on the front of the hood with vertical grill bars on a two-piece grill and the upgraded version had more of a straight hood with a three-piece grill ford claimed that there was uh, 22 improvements to this car over the previous year i saw the list is actually kind of funny his salesman talk But it was still a very, uh, uh, very up-to-date car. And of course, 1942 was supposed to see a whole bunch of improvements. 
and then the war came along. Now we got a button screw in this bad boy so I can put it back together someday because you all know that I'm going to want to do that. So those of you that uh, do know whether you live across the pond or not, you know, I'm a huge fan of the Minnesota Vikings uh, football team and for all you European people, that's American football. So I played with purple. Uh, I shot it with an iridescent, uh, Createx iridescent and then overshot Tamiya red on the top and blue on the bottom. Just I was just playing around. Uh, I like the mix. I may do it again, but it really wasn't what I was looking for. You know, one of the reasons this is one of my favorite cars always is when I was a wee young lad. Uh, this is one of the first cars I remember in my life. My mother had one. Uh, and it was an old wreck. But, you know, I imprinted on the shape, I think, because I've never been a big Ford guy. So anyway, I stripped off that paint and I had a different idea of what I wanted to do. I found this paint on the internet that uh, it's, it looks almost like a primer. So you lay it on and it goes on in this dark gray, kind of a flat looking finish. And then what you do is, is you buff it and it gives it this really worn look. And uh, funny thing is, is I remember my mother's car being like that, but that's not what I'm trying to do. You know, what I'm trying to do is re recreate something that kind of made sense to me. You know, I want to do a street rod, but, you know, as a young guy who grew up in the 70s uh, with a desire for a street rod and not a lot of money all the time, uh, your street rod was always in the midst of something. And, you know, the first thing that you spent your money on uh, was not the paint it was the wheels and under the hood and a pair of headers so this is kind of where I wound up with this thing and I did some scraping of the trim I wasn't real happy with it though because it didn't turn out as I had hoped you see I got my tailpipes and I polished those bumpers pretty good too so anyway, it went back into the stripper and, you know, I'm not going to bore you. Then I wound up here uh, as I'm getting ready to do something else. And uh, there was a lot of people who said, well, leave it like this. And well, yeah, but here's the problem I think you have with that is this is primer. And in the absence of any kind of top coat, it probably wouldn't sustain damage too well. And if I put a top coat on it, it probably isn't going to continue to look like this. The top coat is going to impact this. Um, so anyway, this is where I was going with it. I'm still hung up on my beloved Minnesota Vikings in the back of my brain. And because the car started purple, I thought, well, let me try doing something like this. And there was a lot of bleed through and I just wasn't really happy with it. So uh, back into the stripper, it went again. And then it came out and I had made a decision to use Spectra Flame and I had painted or purchased rather some purple Spectra Flame actually kind of a while back and I never did anything with it. And uh, so I'm using the uh, Spectra Flame Metal Flake base coat and then uh, I overlaid it with the purple again starting with uh, a tack coat and then layering myself up until I kind of got to the point that I wanted to get to. It's a deep, deep purple and I actually love it. So going backwards, yeah, you know, this is where I started with this uh, 1940 Ford that I think looks pretty lame. And like I say, it's a, it's a real cheap casting. You can tell by just how poorly it was done. Uh, but it's good enough, don't get me wrong. And this is where I wound up. So I'm trying to sprinkle some uh, Pixie Dust Karma on my Minnesota Vikings who are going to be playing Oakland today and they really need a win pretty bad. So the Minnesota Vikings episode of Time Riders Wee Little Cars and if you stick around there'll be a version of the bench after. This is Time Rider and I'll leave the light on for you. So hey, thanks for sticking around for this episode of The Bench. 
You know, I don't do a lot of unboxing videos. I don't know why. It's just not my thing, I guess. And uh, But I did get some good mail today. And since I just did a video yesterday, I figured I'd uh, show you what came in the mail. I got this uh, green light little Dodge Dart. Well, I had ordered one of these as kind of an add-on to an order. And when it came, it's like, God, I really like the wheels. And they were just like closing them out for three bucks, I think, as I paid for them. And I, so I ordered four more of them, uh, mostly because I want the wheels. I know, I'm just terrible, aren't I? And uh, anyway, uh, it, was, it was, man. I had packages all over the place today. I wanted to uh, uh, build some little cop cars because, you know, I did that for a really long time. And... Uh, Second Chance Red Line, I've got a, a sheet of decals coming that will have some decals for those cop cars. And then I wanted to upgrade my vice. I see a lot of guys using one of these. I figured I'd give one a try, so I ordered it. That showed up today too. And then uh, I wanted some more grinding bits for all the little bits of uh, grinding that I do. And uh, these diamond tip bits were... Uh, a really good deal anyway and then I had a subscriber send me this and what it is is it's a it's like a, a hand press for the uh, ends of axles and I haven't tried it yet but I will and when I do I'll let you know how it works out and then last but not least I have this and uh, you know the one year anniversary for my channel is coming up and this was the one of the, well, it might not be the very first, but one of the very first uh, Matchbox that I ever uh, redid, restored, customized, whatever. And uh, I think my skills have gone so far, uh, I'm going to redo this. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it yet, but uh, somebody said I should build a shop truck. Well, here you go. Maybe this is going to be my shop truck. So that's all I got for you. Thanks for letting me blather on. This is Time Rider. Have yourself a great week, and I'll see you next time. Click up if you like, down if you don't. Uh, feel free to comment, but please be respectful. Thank you.